Okay, let's talk about something called the Wittig reaction. Now, I know in English, Wittig seems like it would be pronounced Wittig, but the fact is it's a German scientist who developed this chemistry, so we're going to call this the Wittig reaction. Um, I don't want to be too pompous about it because I'm sure I mispronounce lots of international names. I probably mispronounce a lot of U.S. names as well, but it, most people are going to call this the Wittig reaction. So what happens in the Wittig reaction? Well, we can react a carbonyl compound with this phosphonium illid that we just learned how to make. And out from this reaction is going to pop an alkene. Wow. So the video reaction is a pretty powerful reaction. We are making new CC bonds. And that is newsworthy in its own right. So let's see what's really going on in this reaction. We're not going to give a real true mechanism, but we'll at least move some electrons around. So uh, here's my aldehyde. I've drawn it kind of sideways uh, so that we can show the phosphonium illid next to it. I'm going to put all the phenols, just dangle them all off. It's a little bit horrific, but that, those are our atoms that come together. You can imagine the negative charge on our illid. It's pretty nucleophilic, that it might attack the carbonyl. As it turns out, at the exact same time, or pretty much at the same time, this uh, our pi bomb breaks and it attacks the phosphorus. Now, if you follow these arrows, we're going to get something pretty crazy here. We're going to get a four-membered ring. And let's not forget our phenols on our phosphorus. This is called an oxaphosphatane ring. Now, we don't see a lot of four-membered rings in our class. We don't see them because they're not very stable. So you can imagine oxophosphatanes are also not very stable. And this is going to decompose. It quickly falls apart almost as soon as it forms. And the electrons we're going to move are going to look like this. And we're going to break two sigma bonds. And we're going to form two pi bonds. One of our pi bonds is going to be between oxygen and and phosphorus and they love to make pi bonds with each other so that's a good bond to form the other pi bond we're going to make is a new carbon carbon pi bond and that's our alkene typically we're going to focus on the alkene as our product because it, it that's our organic molecule uh, this product is also a product but it's a product we don't want it's a side product and so this is going to end up in the waste jug Let's try phenylphosphine. So we can uh, do this reaction. Our illids up here in the upper left, our illids react very nicely with aldehydes. They can also react with ketones. So you can imagine taking a ketone, reacting this with an illid. And uh, this is going to be part of our alkene and this much is going to be part of our alkene so if we put those together we get this as a product and so we, we can do use ketones to react with our illids just as easily as aldehydes now for the sharp-eyed among you you might say oh dr stevens there's an issue of stereochemistry so over on the right we talk about this alkene is this e or Z geometry. And you know what? This is kind of a lame answer. We're not going to worry about it. There are people who worry about this, and there are rules and ways to memorize whether you get the E or Z alkene. For right now, let's just say it's going to suffice if we can identify the vitic and get the connections and predict structurally what the products are. We, we won't worry about the, um, the stereochemistry of the products. But that's a vitic reaction, really important reaction. Nobel Prizes were awarded over this reaction. So it's an important reaction in organic chemistry, largely because it's a very simple way to make new carbon-carbon bonds from smaller pieces.